In 1995, the founder of 3Com, Robert Metcalf, said, I predict the Internet will soon go spectacularly supernova and in 1996 catastrophically collapse. A century earlier, Thomas Edison said, Fooling around with alternating current is just a waste of time. Nobody will ever use it, ever. These examples illustrate the reason amateur radio operator Bruce Manning says more people should study the history of the telegraph. It gives you an idea of how things progressed along and then you think about what we're doing today and what's going to be happening in another 20, 50, 100 years from now, where we're going to be at. Manning gave a lecture recently on the telegraph at the Tyler History Center in downtown Youngstown. To send a message to the West Coast would take weeks. Before the telegraph, the only way to send messages was through the mail, which was carried by stagecoach, Pony Express, or train. There were a lot of people working on different types of telegrams and telegraph systems in the day. In 1835, Samuel F.B. Morse was in Washington, D.C. when he received a letter telling him his wife had fallen ill at their home in Connecticut. By the time he got back home to Connecticut, his wife had passed away and was buried. And he said there's got to be a better way we can do stuff. Wire telegraph started in the 1840s. Uh, Samuel F.B. Moore started to do some stuff actually in the late 1830s. And 1844 is when he put the, the long line in between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore and sent those first messages we all read about. The first message sent May 24th, 1844 read, What hath God wrought? Impact-wise, huge, huge impact on businesses. They were able to send messages back and forth. Banks used this system a lot for money transfers and so on, and the press used it a lot. It, something big would happen in Washington, D.C., Baltimore would know about it in a matter of minutes. The original design of the telegraph used a magnet to push a pin up and down that would scratch the dots and dashes into a piece of paper, which would then be decoded to get the message. It wasn't until later they realized that part of the design was unnecessary. They finally figured out, hey, a guy can grab a key and make the key go up and down some dits and dahs. And then people said, well, I've listened to it enough. I understand it. I don't need that paper with the, the scribe marks on it. People then began experimenting with how to send voice without the wires. The breakthrough came in 1886 when Heinrich Hertz proved the existence of electromagnetic fields. Of the discovery, he said, I do not think that the wireless waves I have discovered will have any practical application. And most radio manufacturers shared his view. Commercial radio wasn't even thought of. When radio, wireless radio first started, it was just for sending messages. It was to compete against the telegraph. But as amateurs kept coming up with new ways to utilize the technology, the commercial applications began to reveal themselves. And people started playing music on the radio, and people listened to it for entertainment. Uh, there were, there were football, baseball games played on the radio and so on, and that became a huge thing. But a lot of those early people didn't look at it that way, and look what it's turned into today with radio and so on. Which is why Manning says studying the telegraph can be a valuable exercise for people looking at today's technology with an eye toward the future. The people today looking down the road 50 years from now may be thinking one thing and it may be entirely different. Hickey Metal Fabrication, family owned and proudly based in Salem for 75 years. We have state of the art equipment and are ready to handle your start to finish fabrication needs. Flashback is sponsored by Hickey Metal Fabrication.